If Suzanne could go back in time and shake her younger self about marriage, she would. To understand how she could be married to someone for over 26 years with that thought at the back of her mind, you'd simply have to learn who she is first. She has two daughters with her husband Barry, the oldest being 22, so they were about four years into their marriage when they became parents. Sometimes four years just isn't enough time really to get to know someone, and when you add children to the equation, you look past your own concerns and you raise those kids right. If you have a heart that is, and hers was, by all accounts, a beautiful one. She was a gentle, loving soul, but with a very passive demeanor, who found herself in a relationship with a man described as controlling, domineering, and with a quick temper? Not exactly a match made in heaven for a person like Suzanne. You then add her deep Christian faith, now you get a better idea of why Suzanne gave a man like Barry so much of her life. Or maybe gave isn't the right way to say it. More like gave in to Barry. Now for the sake of narrative, I want to liken Suzanne to a butterfly who never was fully able to leave her cocoon. But in 2018, Barry's grip was waning and he couldn't keep her in. She was able to slip her wings out and she flapped it, which caused the slightest ripple in the air. Howdy, stranger, she wrote to a familiar face from the past. She hadn't seen him since high school, the school's star golfer, Jeff. She was dating the star baseball player at the time, which was Barry, but unknown to him, she did feel something for Jeff that one time, at that one party, when he kissed her. And she did feel a spark, but she would go back to Barry, and what could have been was locked away as just a fond memory, just for her thoughts only. Except not exactly, because that memory belonged to Jeff also. Oh wow, it's Suzanne, Jeff must have thought, because she was more special to him than she could have known. She was his crush, but he couldn't have her. All he was able to keep with him was an unforgettable moment at that party. His heart would ache for her as only a teenage boy's could. But time would pass, and life goes on. Now her next decision wasn't meant to mean anything. Innocent curiosity is all it was. You know, what we all do when we happen upon somebody we haven't seen since a lifetime ago. You catch up. How could Suzanne know that the ripple she created in the air had just gently brushed the ocean? He told her he was living in Michigan now, married with six kids, and his magnificent mullet from back in the day had now since relocated to other parts of his body. They would laugh, and she would recount her own journey, and it was therapeutic for both of them, an escape of sorts. Well, they enjoyed each other so much that it eventually became a daily thing, and it remained innocent until the following year in 2019 when they started planning a meetup in New Orleans. Hmm, she probably thought to herself, what if I didn't marry the star baseball player and had gotten with the star golf guy instead? But these were just idle thoughts. She's already made her bed and she was content to lie in it. And Barry was a great provider for the family and he was a good father for the girls. And still, they only booked one room for the both of them. And when they saw each other in New Orleans, we could only imagine that that spark ignited right where it left off three decades ago. The ripples had turned into waves because after that they would plan Indiana, she would come to see him in Michigan, then there was Dallas, then Florida, then the virus took over the world and they had to resort back to texting and secret phone calls. But their love continued to grow just as the waves were. Sometimes the mind, in spite of the heart, keeps you from doing things that feel right and urges you in a path that is perceived as right. She was right to stay with Barry when the girls were born because together they raised their girls to be wonderful people. But now they were old enough to understand more about the world around them. And wouldn't she advise them to follow their hearts just as she wished someone had told her when she was their age? 
Wouldn't she be a hypocrite now if she still didn't follow that? Jeff was the catalyst. She knew she was falling in love with him, so she shut off her mind, her guilt, and her heart started writing 50 things she hated about her marriage and saved it to her iCloud. The waves were massive at this point, and it was heading straight for Barry. Suzanne couldn't just tell him that she wanted a divorce, because she knew all too well about his temper. She had to get a few things in place first. For one, she needed to know how serious Jeff was. That was answer to her utter elation when he texted her, We need to be married. She followed that up with, We need to be husband and wife. Check. The next thing she needed was money. Barry was the sole provider, and she had not worked in years. She had given him half a million dollars, everything she had, to go towards the house. So she had to start saving every penny she could from that point forward. And lastly, if she could avoid being at fault for ending the marriage, then so be it. She already had her suspicions that Barry was having his own affair, because as she puts it, he had a secret life that she wasn't privy to. And how she would go about this happened early 2020 when her best friend played accomplice and bought her a voice activated pen so she could leave lying around to record Barry's supposed affair. She was never able to get that audio. All she recorded instead were their frequent fights, almost always about money. But at least now, she had Jeff to confide in afterwards, and he could always make her feel better. He said, I've known from the beginning that we're perfect for each other. You are perfect for me. She responded with, I love how you love me. I love how you think. I love how we can get through. At this point, they were no longer planning rendezvous. They were now planning their lives together. How does Ecuador sound? And then, oops. The spy pen had been activated and ironically was recording her own affair instead. She immediately erased those recordings. But nothing is ever really erased these days, are they? You are not a homewrecker, she said to Jeff on the recovered files. You are my lover and sweet friend and the man I love dearly, okay? And I'm your woman. Jeff, baby, I love you so much. And now was the time to start mustering up that courage to tell Barry it was over. I mean, she did survive cancer twice in her 49 years. How bad would telling him she wants a divorce be compared to that? Well, he pushed her into a closet and got out a gun and pointed it to his own head and shouted, Is this what you want? Suzanne, scared, relented to his wishes just to de-escalate the situation and things went back to how Barry wanted. But now that door was open and she would bring up divorce any chance she got and each time he would beg her to reconsider, to think of the girls, even quoting Bible verses, using her own faith to guilt her into staying. And it would work and she would wind up staying. But then there was a text. It conveyed the same thing basically, but somehow Barry knew that there was just a finality to it this time, that he couldn't just convince her anymore. It read, I'm done. I could care less what you've been up to and have been for years. We just need to figure this out civilly. And so it turns out that when Suzanne finally flapped her wings, it didn't have the effect of causing a tsunami for Barry. Instead, the waves crashed into her, muffled her cries, and pulled her into the abyss. Suzanne Morphew was reported missing on May 10th, 2020, and has not been heard from or found up to this very recording. Like and subscribe for part two, where we get into hard data on what Barry Morphew did during Suzanne's final day. And for everybody that listened this far, I appreciate it. Here's your guess the punchline. Why couldn't the oil tycoon decide where to store his supply? Good luck.